And I wasn't able to have double cryptic. Yet I still went for a cryptic and I shouldn't have. Pause. He has a... Oh, no, no, no. He, we bounce. We bounce. We do get that off. He goes Snapcaster Bolt. And there's where I would have had the second cryptic off of the brain in a jar. And your opponents aren't going to play around that. They're going to be like, oh, like there's no way he has another cryptic and he's just going to brain in a jar in response. That's where we start losing the game. So I charge with the brain. Now I have double cryptic. But the damage is already done. The damage is kind of already done. Okay. This I brain in a jar cryptic. We fight. I mean, we fight the good fight. Now here I think I go for like a Snapcaster Helix. Or do I go for a cryptic tap? I go for a cryptic, but I don't think I'm supposed to. This is the game I need to watch most closely, by the way. Because we did win the other two games against this player. But this is the game I need to watch most close because it's the game we lost. Or did we, though? Here's the thing. We uh, we technically did finish the game within the allotted time. But we did just crush on the clock for this, which is great. The fact that I was also streaming for you guys is... Okay, so we tech edge the colonnade. He gets in with a snap and then he has another burn spell. No, he has a Nahiri. And we actually keep grinding this out. We actually don't die yet. You'll see. Just drawing all the land. We hit a Snapcaster, I snap Helix, his snap... Like, we make this really... I make this so grindy. Especially since it's Magic Online, there's definitely advantages to doing that. I try to make this, and I try to keep fighting. We Helix his Snapcaster. In retrospect, I think I may have... Yeah, because he has the Electrolyze anyway. I think, in retrospect, maybe I should have Helix Nahiri. We Helix his Nahiri. Or did I accidentally... No, I don't Helix yet. Now I Helix. I was putting the brain into play. So we Helix and Kiri. Stop it from ultimating in the draw step. Or in the upkeep. In the upkeep? Then we Lighthouse. No, we don't Lighthouse. We're charging the brains. Okay, we charge brains. We scry. We see a land. We bottom it. We draw he uh, draw an Electrolyze. We lies the Nahiri below 8. She goes to 7. We try even more lands. And then this is where I draw nothing, I think. We draw a path. I brain scry. I see a boom bust. Too late. Would have been fine earlier, because we can operate off of very little mana. Okay, no, 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 it's not over yet. We pulled the Nahiri to keep her off ultimating again. Crojan says Nahiri combo, honestly, in my testing, is just not that good. I trust you. Yeah, like, we've won plenty of game ones that didn't involve the Nahiri Wombo combo. Alright, so we scoop Arena there. If we had, like, a Cryptic, we could, like, tap the Emmy and, you know. But, anyways. If we had a Cryptic, I would have bounced this Nahiri and tried to assemble another one. Super grindy game. We're up on time, though, as you notice. Solid 30 seconds. And then games two and three, we did take down. Games two and three, we did take him down. So it wasn't so much that... The opponent's colonnade animating early. I feel like that's the last thing you do. As, blue -red, as a blue-red -red player, colonnade is usually one of the last things you do. We actually, though, get to combo him, and you'll see. This game was tight. This was a tight game. I think we actually did it through the... So he's brought in a stony silence. The stony silence doesn't matter, because here's the thing. Let me pause it right here. You're like, oh no, our brains don't work. I, I took the brain in the jars out. Because I assume this is coming in. Anyways. So the opponent has some dead cards in his 75. Um, that's pretty nice, actually. And that's been happening consistently. Most most matchups I see players, they'll bring in some form of artifact tape. Maybe not all of their artifact tape, but maybe just their best stuff. Like their best stuff just to hit brain. Which is fine. But they're still dead cards. Generally try to empty my opponent's hand before smashing with Colonnade. Yeah, same here, Dirigible. That's easier for Esper. That's easier for, like, Esper control. It's not the same for Blue at Red, and that's why I've never really... I mean, I like Colonnade. I think it can be so awesome Blue at Red. And you need to be the right variant of Blue Red. Now, he does stick his Nahiri here, but you'll see we work around this. So I toss a Bolt, and I toss another Bolt. If I had drawn land there, though, I would have not only tossed Bolt, I would have played a Nahiri of my own. 
but I don't. We're patient. Slams another one. We're like, oh, okay. I go for snap bolt. He counters. I think he countered here. Yeah, we get another mana leak. But that mana leak would have stopped mine. I think I slammed a Hiri. I slam a Hiri of my own. We plus, we bin the Emmy. Now, careful. Remember what I said game one. So awkward. If I top a Snapcaster, which we will later in this match, I think, if I remember correctly. There's the Vendillion Click, and that makes things a little awkward. He takes my Electrolyze, leaves me with a second Nahiri. I bin that Nahiri. I think I Helix the Vendillion Click with Muddle behind it. He think he counters. No, I have to redirect to the Nahiri because he was at 8. So this gets really rough. This gets grindy. This gets tough. Now there, I think the opponent could have justified a Colonnade attack, but here's the thing. He doesn't know our hand, so it's like, there could be a path there. We see an Electrolyze, redirects to the Nihiri. I do take out the, and then we don't discard anything, but we still just plus the Nihiri. I think that's what makes her kind of insane, actually. I wasn't that sold on the card until, like, really, like, the fact that her plus is a May, I think is what makes her so playable. The you may discard a card, because, like, here, I, I kind of want both the Jace and the Muddle, because Muddle's going to answer this Nihiri in a second. You'll see. So we get a colonnade attack on the Nahiri. We do lose our Nahiri here. But that's okay, because in doing so, he's tapped out and he can't stop this play unless he has exactly Spell Snare. I purge his Nahiri. We say go. He just randomly attacks me with a colonnade, which... That, that didn't make any sense. If he has, like, other relevant counter magic. So I'm like, he's got nothing. So we go for a Jace. And indeed, he's got nothing, not even... I mean, it's like, it's nice that we dodged a Mana Lake there. Colonnade tries to attack Jace. Even if this path didn't go off, Jace wasn't dying. Jace does a good job protecting himself. He may not plus up as fast as Nahiri does, but Jace does a much better job protecting himself against an opponent that goes wide. Nahiri's better against single targets, so they're, they're very different cards. We start plusing this Jace up, and I just plus this Jace up. And I plus this Jace, and I plus this Jace, and I'm just, I'm going for the Emrakul at this point. We're going for the, the, the Jace ultimate at this point. I draw Nahiri though, so I think I make the land drop. I minus Jace, I'm switching gears now. Now I'm looking to just protect this Nahiri. So I play the Nahiri, we've got Snare, Remand, Backup. We bend the Bolt, say go. And now maybe you see why I kind of like the split, or I mean, we're not running a split, I'm still running a place at Nahiri, but I like having additional walkers, you know, that can do the same thing that she does, as far as the Emrakul combo. I think the fact that people don't even consider Jace bothers me. Because, um, like, when you're looking at a combo, right, let, let, let's say this is a bit of a combo, right? You've got some Nahiris, and you've got an Emrakul in your 75. It's a bit of a, now, now here's the thing, let me pause it here. How many have we gone through? I've gone through two. Opponent's gone through two as well, but you know what? I also had a Jace, and I think if this is actually going to be an archetype that's being played at the GP, me having access to more Planeswalkers that do the Emrakul thing is excellent. I actually don't even bother grabbing the Emrakul. I think I just keep plusing my walkers. Yeah. But we are running the one of Emrakul. Does that make sense, gents? You guys are awfully quiet. Colonnade attack. I think I snap path this thing. Yeah, snap path. Okay, he scoops. Now, I think that Nahiri is best run in redundant copies. I think that Jace, though, is happy being a singleton. He's more specific than she is. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm crazy. Like, if we're going to really try this, and of course, Crojan, K. Trojan just said, she hasn't been great in my testing. I believe you. Um, I think, though, if there's, e like, out of either Planeswalker here that's best in redundant copies, I think it's Nahiri? Because multiple copies of Jace are awkward, but, like, maybe not. You just play it and then you minus the new one. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's too quick for me to say. It maybe it just feels that multiple copies of her are less awkward. K 
Kettler says, I think he did great. Not why sh not sure why everyone was freaking out. What? What in the chat? Oh, about how I decided to make him run up his clock instead of just Nihiri ulting for Emrakul? I think it was the smarter play because we ended the game with only a minute lead on that guy. Game three, we uh what was game game three was brief. Game three was really brief if we want to go over it like it's like two minutes. Because he only had like three minutes on his clock. Yeah, at this point he had three minutes thirteen. I have four twenty-two. Um So like the opponent just didn't have enough time to play another game with us, but we beat him anyway, which is great. You'll see. I'll show you real quick. It was four minutes long. Okay, so that would make sense. <laughs> So really, really briefly. Yeah, I mean, instead of colonnades, I'm running a couple tech edge and some more flexible lands. During the game, too. Oh, uh, what are you trying to build? Just another Magic Monday. Mr. Mofa says, Honestly, ulting Nahiri right away wouldn't have guaranteed a win. He still had two life and plenty of lands left. Well, there you go. So there's a Jace. I don't deploy the Jace, though. Taking her up, way up, was fine, even without a clock factor. I mean, you have to worry about Celestial. Jace does not worry about Celestial. I'm not saying he's better, but honestly, there are more answers to her in the format than there are to him. Celestial Purge still sees play. So no offense to Nihiri. I feel like the Jace is maybe a little bit harder to answer once you stick him. I don't know. They're different cards. I can't say one is better than the other. So I'm just running both because I think that they both achieve the combo. And you'll see here, even against Nahiri, I do... I mean, obviously there are other cards involved here. But we do Jace Ultimate. There's the negate we knew about. We trade the muddle with it. No, I let it I let it resolve, I think. No, 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 I do... I, do, I go for the cryptic. He just... My opponent dispels. We knew about the dispel from the Vidillion Click. He's drawn a mana lake, though. That's brutal. This looks rough, right? Because Nahiri ults faster than Jace. This looks really rough, right? We look like we're in trouble. I mean, just because we're running on time doesn't mean we win the match. It looks rough, right? It looks rough. Yeah, I mean, like, going back and watching the game, even though this is not that long ago, it's like, I'm looking at this, and it looks like the opponent might actually steal this off the Emrakul. Man, like, I pay for. I pay for it. Okay. I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to pause it here. I think Mana Lake is a fine card. I think there are matchups that it's awful in. I think, I think, I'm going to say it one more time. I think Mana Lake is a fantastic card. I also think at the same time there are matchups it is awful in. My opponent just exchanged two Mana Lakes for a Snapcaster Mage. My opponent just exchanged two cards to fight a 2-1 Ambush. There was nothing for my Snapcaster to actually flash back. If you look at my graveyard, G Panta 101, thank you for the follow email. And maybe that's one of the reasons I'm staying away from the card. I don't know. I think it's a fine magic card. But it is awkward. There's the dispel. We fight over the dispel with, in my opinion, despite everybody's thoughts, a fine magic card. I think this card is awesome. Um, I get to use it as a hard counter against Scape Shift. I get to use it as a hard counter against Ad Nauseam. I get to trade it with a bolt no matter how many lands that they've drawn. I get to also turn it into a more useful card if the modes of counter instant or sorcery are not that useful. It is a slightly overcosted dispel, but it is a more useful dispel. Thanks for the follow arena causal. And you'll see, let me pause it here. We Jace Ultimate and he's toast. It is essentially Emrakul Armageddon over here. We finish him off with one of my favorite spells in magic. Not trying to pick a fist fight with you guys. I played Mana Leak in my blue at red for years. In fact, I played blue at red. That's what most of my modern career has been variants of blue at red. I used to play stock blue at red and play paper for years until I sold out and bought into Legacy. Probably best decision I ever made. I mean, I like modern, don't get me wrong, but I've just enjoyed it better on Magic Online. Um, it's been much more lucrative and just better for me in general. Better for my health. I don't know what it is. I like the paper legacy community way more. No offense. I'm not trying to pick again. I'm not trying to pick a fist fight with you guys because I really care about you guys and my viewers, but I really do. I mean that. 
I typically mesh better and enjoy magic more in the legacy community, paper community. I don't know what it is. I, I can't put my finger on it. I'm not trying to 